In the current landscape of YouTube, it's not very uncommon to see people getting angry at a content creator for something that they did in the past or as of late. Most of the time, if the drama is serious enough, people can have their videos dislike bombed and their reputation completely ruined. But rarely have I ever seen a case where someone got into serious drama that gets them fired from their job and manages to find a new start in almost the same field. The person I'm referring to is of course Nick Robinson. The man currently has over 800,000 subscribers and seems to be doing pretty well, with the typical YouTube gaming nakey jakey type niche with some pretty obscure topics. I think he's a genuinely good content creator. Some people, however, don't. A lot of the replies to his current tweets on Twitter happen to be people memeing about things that are very serious and calling him a predator. Considering that the only big YouTuber to shed some light on the situation is Review Tech USA, and considering that some of the archives of the case look like this, the aim of today's video is to properly explain the situation for those who are either A, uninformed, or B, don't know anything about it. So you'll need a bit of background about Nick at this point in time. Nick Robinson, before he was known for going to Japan a lot, was first and foremost a video producer and editor for Polygon. He was a co-host of the series Carboys with Griffin McElroy, and was also known for the Cool Games Incorporated podcast. The whole situation was kickstarted with a tweet Nick made regarding Overcooked on Switch. There's a picture of a support message that I'm not going to read, captioned with, Please record a video of our shitty port being shitty so we can see how shitty it is. Twitter user at Landon Van Bus responded with, Actually helping them is a way better way to fix the problem than whining about how it's broken. To which Nick replied with, Hey Landon! Shut the f up. Now you may be wondering, how did this kickstart the conversation about Nick? Well, now deleted Twitter user BloodyHoney underscore commented on this interaction by saying, Maybe Nick would have time to help the Overcooked devs out if he wasn't in every woman in games DMs all the time. This led to several Twitter users and people in the gaming journalism scene coming out and giving statements about him. The first of the actual allegations that I'm going to be talking about is Twitter user Alolan Meowth, also known as Elliot Cat. I would again like to reiterate, the primary piece of hard evidence given is a text conversation with Nick, where he showed a Waluigi t-shirt, made some flirty remarks, and sent an optical illusion meme which reads, send nudes when you do what it says. She also added a piece of information that someone who was underage, involved with Nick, was contacting Vox. Lastly, she showed a livid text message she sent to Nick. There are more tweets about Nick in the following months and years after, but they're not really that important all things considered. The main reason I'm kind of glossing over these allegations in DMs is mainly because it just proves the dude's kind of shitty towards her and that's about it. Elia also claims to have friends with definitive proof on Nick, but are too scared to come out with it. Also, for further clarification, as stated by her, she was 23 at the time, was not a fan but a friend, was hit on by him a lot, and says she's not really the smoking gun of proof when it comes to Nick Robinson. Keep that in mind for later. Next person, now deleted account Soul Spear, or Madeline as we're calling her for the rest of this, tweeted out, Okay, I'm done beating around the bush about this. I am one of the girls he talked to and tried to get nudes from and shit. I'm not saying he's a predator or whatever, but it is what it is and I was 18. I was fine with the age difference at the time, but it's there. If y'all have any questions, you can ask me personally. Most of the stuff is on Snapchat, so I don't have many receipts, but I still have some stuff. But yeah, not trying to attack or anything, but he definitely did go for his fans as well. After this, a Reddit account was created and posted on the subreddit for Cool Games Incorporated. To summarize the post, Madeline essentially locked her account, stating she didn't mind archives of the tweets being spread, retracted her comment about the pictures being nudes, emphasizing the age difference being 18 and 26, calling him pathetic for like flirts and replies, and says her DMs are open for any further questions. I also ended up finding four DM screenshots from her account, which are mainly just really bad flirting. It also shows that they were reciprocating the flirting with I tease you way more than you tease me. One thing I never got about the specific allegation was how she said she was fine with the age gap at the time and then says, oh wait, never mind. This person was of legal age, consented willingly, then backtracked. Madeline even acknowledged it and essentially said, but he's still in the wrong. I'm sorry, but other than the position of power angle, I see absolutely nothing wrong with this. The last one I wanted to touch on is at which Oedipus, who made some very serious allegations regarding Nick. The tweets read, Wild how Nick Mullen is more of a good boy than Nick Robinson. At TYI like sex responds, It's just wild because I always knew of him as a dude who was in random girls mentions. Even people from like Sufu and shit outside of games. OP then replies with, I never knew until I tweeted at him and had two separate friends tell me he was hitting on them when they were underage. This specific allegation got me scratching my head. The only other time I heard underage being brought up was an unsubstantiated claim by Elia, so I ended up DMing the person, asking about what happened, to which I was met with the tweets in question being deleted. Before you ask why I gave a tweet with such little engagement at the time of day, it's because it was linked in a huge Reddit post as evidence and was part of the formatting nightmare known as the Nick Robinson case file. Oh, and uh, once again. There were also people in the industry tweeting out about the situation, with all of them basically saying sexual harassment bad. The only one that truly stands out is a now deleted tweet by Danica Herod, who said Nick had a reputation for this kind of thing. Nick ended up apologizing on August 10, 2017 with this statement. I messed up and I owe you an explanation. Over nine years on this website, I've used it for every aspect of my life. Making friends, finding jobs, and yes, embarrassingly, flirting. This means that I have, on many occasions, used Twitter to hit on people. That's embarrassing enough on its own. 
as it's now clear that some of these advances were unwanted or handled very poorly. But there's another significant issue. While my platform and responsibilities grew, I failed to grow alongside them. Over the past couple years, I've used Twitter the same way I always have, including sliding into DMs. Not that long ago, I had an extremely small following online. I never imagined I'd someday be getting messages from people about how the silly stuff I made pulled them out of a dark place or affected them positively. All that to say this, I'm now, as weird as it sounds, in a position of power. But I'm ashamed to admit that until the past few days, I hadn't appreciated the responsibility that brings. I'll admit that when this conversation first started, I was defensive and confused. But the more I thought about it, the more I understood where people were coming from. I believe that when someone says you've hurt them or made them uncomfortable, the right thing to do is not to argue, it's to listen. What I always thought of as flirting can quickly become something more insidious when one of the people is in a position of power. I totally failed to recognize this. I've spent the past week doing little but reflecting on my own behavior. I'm embarrassed, obviously, but more than embarrassed, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to anyone I ever made uncomfortable with my advances, and I'm sorry for disappointing fans of mine who, rightfully, expected better from me. I know I let you down, and I know it falls on me to earn back your trust by changing my behavior going forward, and that's exactly what I intend to do. Like with when the news broke, people from the industry also ended up tweeting about it. There were also two completely anonymous sources via throwaway accounts on Reddit who posted about his apology, claimed to know Nick personally, work in the industry, and claimed that people in the industry are calling him insincere, a claim that can actually be proven, and claimed to know about a case where Nick nearly took advantage of a drunk girl. You have no idea how big this would be if it had any form of proof or backing to it. In my opinion, with things like this especially, Reddit shouldn't exactly be the first place to go to. A report to the apparently non-existent Polygon HR department should be. Statements like, it's amazing how extremely ignorant the internet is, and how willing to believe in the best of Nick you all are, in spite of having no evidence for their claims, absolutely reek of, dude, trust me. In conclusion, I think this whole situation heavily depends on where your morals lie. And for me personally, I kind of forgive Nick. Before you call me a Nick Robinson or sexual assault apologist, hear me out. If we're looking at just the facts, not anything that has zero backing to it, what Nick did doesn't seem that bad. I mean, there are probably some people who came out and actually complained to Polygon themselves. And believe me, I 100% understand why no hard evidence has actually been brought out. But the same people who say, you're not entitled to know anything about the situation, publicly shitting on him under the guise of, we don't have to tell you anything, raises some red flags. Two of the specific accusers also stand out a lot to me, to be honest. Madeline made some extremely bold claims, then deleted their account with like four receipts that only proved that she talked to Nick, and opened up a ton more questions than answers, and which had a piss deleted an essentially unquestioned claim when questioned about it in DMs. The flirting that was also shown was between consenting adults who could have said no and blocked him at any time. There's also nothing in these DMs to say whether or not Nick was abusing his power either. And yet people take one look at this and think, yep, he did it. And even then, what kind of power did he actually have? He was a video producer at Polygon. Keep in mind though, I'm looking at this from a YouTube commentary perspective. For me to completely write someone off, Proper receipts are pretty much required. In general, Twitter likes to play judge, jury, and executioner with everything, even when the facts aren't clear. Most of what Nick did is genuinely being spread like a game of telephone. A lot of the time that I see Nick being brought up and people actually ask what he did, the proof gets brought up, people say, hey, this isn't that bad, or hey, what's your source? And that's the end of the thread. It's like people see the hate train and throw a completely unsubstantiated claim in because, hey, he probably did that one too, right guys? On top of that, the majority of a major source that people look at, aka the Nick Robinson case file, has public reactions to the whole thing as the majority of its basis, with very little proven statements and receipts from the matter. Let me just say, a bunch of rumors do not give credence to other rumors. Hell, the document links him listening to a Spotify song to his apology being insincere, includes a literal joke from an episode of Touch the Skyrim, and claims Madeline from earlier was asked for nudes when she stated that she wasn't. This is clear bias and a competency in a case file that has absolutely no place for it. It also doesn't help that it looks like that scene from It's Always Sunny. When I open the door, what do I find? There's not a single goddamn desk in that office. Lastly, people try to push this narrative that he never apologized and never took accountability for what he did. But honestly, I thought the apology he put out was good. He properly took accountability and actually said, I'm sorry, admitting he was in the wrong. In the years since the situation, Nick has seemingly taken the time to improve himself as a human being. The past three years have had absolutely no allegations actually go on with Nick, just people reminding others of the situation. So at the end of the day, no matter what side of the coin you're on, or if you agree or disagree with me, we can all say, he is terrible at flirting. I can't wait for like the like to dislike ratio to be bombed and comments call me an apologist without even watching the video. So what do you think? Do you think Nick should be forgiven? Or are these claims and industry reactions enough to write him off? Comment down below and tell me what you think. Anyway, that's the end of the video. Like it if you like it, dislike it if you didn't. DDoS my dishwasher if you really didn't. Subscribe if you want to see some more content from me and I'll see you in the next video whenever that may be. Peace.